When you are done watching this video, you will know about something that 99% of people from Brisbane do not. But before I tell you how and where to find the SS Bocco, let me tell you about it. Or otherwise, all you'd be finding is several hundred tons of metal in a suburb of Brisbane. The SS Bocco was a paddle steamer, but not just any steamship, but one of the most famous in the whole of Brisbane. By the way, if you wanted to know what SS stood for in the name, it's steamship. But why was it so bloody famous, I hear you ask? Well, you see, whilst it started off as just a tugboat, all that was about to change. See, back then, the Brisbane River was a super highway for shipping. On a side note, this picture is where the Story Bridge is now. But getting back to the Bocco, whilst this 38 metre ship started off as a tug in 1877, soon its owners were like, I reckon we could make more money taking people to the resort town of Redcliffe. So they went with that, and this little ship started to become more famous. Then the owners were like, ooh, I reckon we could connect more with our customers if we took families out on excursions to Morton Island. And once again, this little ship became even more famous. Then they were like, hmm, I reckon we could connect better with our men folk of the city if we offered snapper fishing charters. And the Bocco became even more famous. Soon, the SS Bocco was completely one with Brisbane. It was so famous, it would be like asking any self-respecting Brisbaneite, do you know the story bridge? The difference is, if you were to ask any Brisbaneite back in the 1900s, do you know the Bocco? Instead of trying to relate to an inanimate object like a bridge, they'd probably have an emotional reaction because of their relationship with this vessel. They'd be like, of course I know the Bocco. Oh, I shouldn't say this, but I went to Redcliffe on it with my boyfriend and we had a really romantic getaway. Or maybe they'd say, yes, I know the Bocco. I went on it to Morton Island with my family and we had an absolute ball. You simply must take your family next time. Or perhaps they might say, oh, I know the Bocco all right. Yes, my grandson and I went out snapper fishing on it. He caught the biggest snapper I've ever seen. So how the blazes did such a beloved ship end up in its current smashed up state? Unfortunately, this ship was a victim of its own success. See, because holidays and excursions and fishing trips became so popular, soon it just couldn't compete with the newer ships. And like so many other ships of its time in this area, it ended up being dumped on a riverbank and forgotten. So yeah, in 1917, she was dragged into Aquarium Passage and stripped of anything valuable, and her remains were just left to rust away. And she's been rusting away in this location for the last 107 years. So now, let me show you how to get there. In order to get there, you will need to drive over here towards the end of Paringa Road, Marare. Now something of note here is that some of these car parks are actually private property. So I generally just park on the side of the road or anywhere that doesn't say keep out. When I hike to places like this, I generally like to wear long sleeve shirts and thick pants and thick boots. Because the reason for this is we're walking through that. Yep, that. <laughs> oh no, I'm joking. There's actually a track. If you walk along, there is sort of a track, and now it comes down to how, whether they've mowed it out or not. So you can walk along here, no problems, but sometimes they don't mow it. And what'll happen is you will find yourself in grass like this. Well, it's up to my chin and I am six foot one. And the other thing is, when you get over towards the mangroves, there are these spiders and they're bloody everywhere. Now, as you walk along here, you find these things. There's sort of a track that exists through here. But it, as you walk through it, you'll often lose it and then you'll just refind it. So I'm, I'm guessing there was something here at one point in time because you keep on, all the way through here, there are footings and bricks and bits of... Uh, foundation so uh, must have there must have been something here a long time ago oh yuck i hate spiders yucky from here it's just walking along the riverbank for about 700 meters 
Now, the first thing you come across when you're walking along towards the Boko are these things. I'm not actually sure what they are, but truthfully, there's heaps of metal under the ground here. It's all over the place. Next, what you'll come across on the track is this. Now, last time I was here, it was more whole. It has actually degraded since last I've seen it. But I believe what this is, is actually this thing. I mean, I could be wrong, but my gut tells me it's this. So this is what I'm going with. When you've walked about a kilometer, you will find the thing that I was showing you at the beginning of this video. Now, do you see this thing here? And then there's like, there's something in, in, the, in between. And then over there, there's another big boiler. This thing would have sat about here in the ship. What it is, is the engine apparatus that would turn these paddles. Now, when you walk on further from those, those big wheel things over there, you come across this, and this is the ship itself. And if you look at it, it's quite large, actually. This is the front. And then the, it continues all the way up there. Something else I should have said earlier is that you will need to get here at low tide or just before. Otherwise, you won't see this ship in all her glory because she'll be underwater. Also, if you look at this side of the ship, you'll observe something a bit sad, and it's this. Because of its exposure to salt water, this side has completely disintegrated. And also, if you look at the other side of the ship, you will see that water is starting to seep through the hull, and it's also being pierced by the roots of mangroves. So yeah, I don't think this old girl will be with us much longer. On my way back, I observed this. Something I noticed whilst I was here. <laughs> so this it's a geocache by the looks of it. Hmm, what's that? That's interesting. Mm. Oh, it smells awful. It smells utterly dreadful. Fortune, oh, it smells like poo. Yuck. Oh, what the fuck? Oh, that's why. Water has breached the, the casing and now it's gone all moldy and that's why it looks and smells like that. That's, that's a shame, that's really sad. I would have liked to have written in that. Bugger. On my way back to the car, I also found something else. Now, occasionally, when you're walking along here, you find these bricks and they say something on them. Just wash it and show you. <sighs> Looks like Strathpine something. Strathpine. Yeah, Strathpine. If I look at something else that's illegible. If you know anything about these bricks, please tell me. I'd, I'd be actually quite interested. Anyway, if you've liked this video, I've done many others like it on the rather bizarre history of our area. And, as always, if you've learned something new, please like, share, subscribe, and press the bell notification. Cheers. Thanks.